So today I'm going to uh, visit some museums. I'm currently staying at this place, Hotel Morales, which is a cute little place. And uh, I just got here in Guadalajara. So I'm not sure what my impressions are so far. So come along for the ride and uh, see what it's like. It's really nice they have uh, explanations for the uh, for disabled people who can't hear. So this looks like a room full of. Uh, Crumbling Mayan destruction. I believe it's a statement. It's a statement. Here we have some sculptures with uh, what looks like traditional fabrics kind of smushed in between these geometric shapes and again I think the uh, the interpretation I'm getting here is uh, the culture indigenous culture being trapped or compressed uh, by outside structures which could be political structures uh, power structures so it seems like the uh, the geometric shapes on the outside represent power authority political structures institutions and the inside represents the indigenous cultures and uh, values that are being suppressed, compressed, squeezed, controlled, bondage. I mean, there's a lot here to unpack, but that's the symbolism I'm getting and they're being represented in many different forms, which means that there's many different ways that the power structures are oppressing the indigenous culture. That's my takeaway from this room. Let me know what you think in the comments of my interpretation. So in this room, um, we have what appears to be um, 
egg-like objects. I'm not sure if they're egg. It's supposed to be like an egg. I don't know what it represents. It seems to represent like an egg. And the eggs, I'm not sure if that's what they're meant to be, are in, encased in this volcanic black rock. It looks volcanic because it's black. And uh, all the eggs seem to be different. There's a black one here. And other ones with many different colors and styles and uh, maybe i don't know my interpretation of this work um, using you know, my art history background and experience is that the egg again represents the indigenous old world culture of aztecs and other mayan indigenous cultures that were native to this land, being born from the earth, coming out of the earth. So the, the earth or the volcanic primal soil, which the black rock represents, it represents to me that it is uh, the primordial mother, you know, mother earth in the form of volcanic rock giving birth to native culture that's my that's my take this here i'm not quite sure what this means but uh, feathers they look like artifacts of feathers pieces of Feathers. I don't know if they're bronze or clay, I'm not sure, but they're all pinned together. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, here we have the heads of what look like colonial Spaniards uh, because they are busts of uh, what look to be like important people. And their heads are being um, are kind of being smushed by these by these poles that extend up to the ceiling so uh, something is holding these people down and, uh, I'm not sure what this means exactly um, obviously it's a statement about colonial rulers I'm not quite sure what that statement is. Again, if anyone has an idea, uh, please write it in the comments. So in this part of the exhibit, what I'm seeing is uh, relics or, or, you know, replicas of Mayan or uh, old indigenous rocks, building blocks um, from temples and uh, structures indigenous to Mexico and the area. And they're all kind of, again, being placed in these modern constructed um, platforms and it seems like maybe on first glance you think well you know well that's just 
you know, convenient way to show these things, but to me, I think there's a statement, especially when you look at these and how they're um, being presented. And I think what I'm getting from these pieces, or the way they're being presented, is that uh, that the that there is a relationship between the ancient artifacts and the modern world. That somehow the modern world, through its structures, is trying or uh, attempting to reconstruct or hold up, uh, support the ancient old structure. That's what I'm getting from this. That's the interpretation I see, is that the modern world structure is supporting the old relics of the old culture. I mean, I guess this museum and this exhibit is an example of that. Kind of an attempt to You know, to give life, to give understanding to the old structures of um, of the indig indigenous people. There we have it, that was that room. Let's see what else there is to see. So the idea of turning uh, a historical building like this, which I think used to be a hospital or something, into a gallery, a contemporary art gallery, is just an amazing feat. It's fantastic. And something I see in some cities and not in others. Tragically, I think it's lacking in some cities. I wish uh, they would. Turn some buildings or repurpose other places into um, galleries. Okay, now we have the next space. Uh, 
Uh, so here we see an eclectic mix of work. It looks like maybe, not sure if it's from two different artists or the same artist. To me, this looks like um, the kind of work that maybe you see or visualize after taking some ayahuasca or something. It really has that ayahuasca thing going on. This looks like a political statement written on vases. Again, it's not highly original, but these look like uh, kind of crochet or something. Work sewn from fabric. Again, they all seem to have a political statement. It seems to be a very feminine statement. It seems to be about women. I don't read Spanish, so uh, I can't tell you what that says. paintings again.
obviously this room has a very uh, sexual orientation, uh, kind of along the lines of uh, maybe a lesbian orientation. I'm not sure. It's very interesting though. They're not afraid to explore their sexual feelings, imagination. which is, I believe, the central chapel or cathedral. We have the famous mural works of the uh, famous Mexican muralist. Uh, that's the name. Who is the name of the artist? Jose Clemente Orozco. Jose Clemente Orozco. Thank you. Jose Clemente Orozco is the artist a fairly famous muralist here in Mexico. He did this entire space. If you can see it. Hope you can see it. It's pretty enormous. And it's dark. But I hope you can see it. ceiling might be hard to see with this wide-angle lens, but you'll get an impression. It's quite amazing. All this work. It's not Michelangelo, that's for sure. It's much darker. Much darker theme to his work. Again, Mexico has a dark history, so I'm not surprised. themes going on. It seems like each panel has something to say, but mostly it's dark. It has a darkness to it. I think they still haven't completely reconciled. I don't think they've completely reconciled the uh, atrocities that were committed to the indigenous people. They haven't completely processed them. I mean, how can you process what happened? How can you process the slaughtering 
destruction of that culture, you know, that you now live and profit from that land that you stole in the name of king, queen, church. I mean, how do you reconcile that? I mean, this is, I don't want to compare it to the Holocaust, but in a way, it's a kind of a Holocaust to the indigenous people. I mean, it's something every Mexican has to live with. They have to live with this past and this guilt. Either it's consciously acknowledged or unconsciously in them of the great harms that were committed. decidió cerrarlo y mejor aprovechar el espacio para fomentar el arte y la cultura y los murales de José Clemente Bosco. Y a partir de 1963 hasta la fecha es Instituto Cultural Caballo, me refiero a que es museo. Y en 1997 la UNESCO lo proclamó patrimonio de la UNESCO. Desde que fue la fecha, There you have it. I'm not sure if this is it or not, but I think it is. I'm going to wander that way to see if there's anything else to see, but it seems like I've been through most of the rooms that are actually open. It's quite an enormous place. I mean, it's huge. You could really get lost in here, but at the same time, it's quite beautiful. We have the uh, Roman arches. We have the wonderful cathedral. It's quite a place. 
What a beautiful place. I think they need some fountains though. I'm not sure if they're originally here or not. This looks like a work area. There you go. That was the Museo de las Cabanas. I think I'm going to make this a separate video because it's so big and so long that uh, it warrants its own video and for those of you who are interested in these things then I would say uh, it would be a good idea to watch it. Okay, on to the next thing.